Hi, are you ready for some bedtime stories? I don't know where Bernard is. I have a feeling he might be trying to hibernate, but we'll see if we can get him back next week. But we're gonna start off with a story about, well, an animal that's not going to hibernate. This is called George Flies South. It's written and illustrated by Simon James. And it's published by Candlelit Press. The leaves on the trees were turning brown. Winter was coming. Lots of birds were heading south and it was time for George, that's George right there, to learn to fly. Are you ready, George? Asked his mom. Mm, not quite, said George. I might fall. I think I like my nest best. Will you get some worms for me, mom? Please, I'll just stay here. So while George waited, a strong gust of wind swept through the park. It tore through the branches, scattering the leaves everywhere, and George's nest wobbled. And then it lifted into the air. Look, Mom, said George, look at me. I'm flying. But George's mom was too far away. She couldn't hear him calling. When she flew back, George and the nest were gone. George, George, she cried, where are you? Do you see where George landed? On the top of a car, the car that this man is getting into. I'm here, mom, called George. I flew down in my nest. And then, without warning, George and his nest were on the move again. Am I going south, mom? Asked George. There's his mom up there. There's George. Hold on, shouted his mom. I'm coming. But George couldn't hold on, and his nest took off into the air. Whoosh. Look at me, Mom, look at me, said George. I'm flying again. Do you see where he's going to land this time? On some lumber. You can't stay here, George, said his mom. You've got to leave your nest. Try to flap your wings. Well, George tried. Try harder, said his mom. Where are we going? And what are we going to do, Mom, asked George. Well, finally, the boat that George was on stopped and George was lifted up, up, up into the air. Don't move, George, called his mom. George looked down. He was glad he still had his nest. Don't worry, said his mom. We'll try again tomorrow. So George curled up in his nest and fell fast asleep. Now the next morning, George woke with a start. Oh, do you see what I see? Look out, George, shouted his mom. Crack, the cat landed on the board where George's nest was, and George's nest began to fall. Don't worry, Mom, he called. I'm all right. Down, down, down he fell, twig by twig. The nest fell apart until only George was left. Mom, cried George, I've lost my nest. Oh, George, you have to flap your wings, shouted his mom. Now, it's time. So George tried really hard. You can do it, said his mom. I'm trying, said George. And with a deep breath and a huge beat of his wings, George flew. I knew you could do it, George, said his mom. I'm ready to fly south now, she said George. Let's go. I hope there's lots of worms because you know what birds like to eat, worms. 
Well, should we do a finger play about something you might eat? Can you get your hot dogs ready? I've got my five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So one little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So now no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, we're going to have a story now about a little boy and his grandpa. And this is called Beneath. It's written by Corey Deerfield, and I believe illustrated by Corey as well. Yes. And it's published by Little Brown and Company. Called Beneath. Finn was in a horrible mood. Grandpa wanted to talk about it. Finn did not. No, he said, you won't understand. What if we just go for a walk, Grandpa asked. Please? Finn let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine, but I'm staying under here. Don't worry, said Grandpa. I'll remember to think of what's beneath. Grandpa headed for the forest. It's just like when I look at the trees and remember there are parts that I can't see. Because beneath what's growing up above is what's growing deep below. You see the tree's roots? Yeah. Or there, Grandpa pointed. See that boat just sitting out in the water? Finn shrugged. Sometimes, beneath what looks perfectly still, so much can be swirling around. Look at all those fish. Trying to guess what's beneath can be easy. Grandpa whispered, I think she's going to be a mom. Other times, what's beneath is a mystery. I'm not sure what he's digging for. Can you see what's underground there? I see. Um, I think that's a vole and some babies, a frog, a chipmunk, a whole family of chipmunks. Hmm. Beneath something solid can be something hollow. Beneath what's falling apart can be what's just starting to form. See little plants growing down under the ground? Beneath what's happening on the outside is what's happening on the inside of plants and animals and people. Finn wanted to know. Oh, there's a lady who's going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Of course, Grandpa answered. Everyone is more than you see what you see. Beneath appearances are experiences. Beneath actions are explanations. And beneath what's different is what's the same. And sometimes, Grandpa paused. Beneath someone who looks like they won't understand is someone who knows exactly how you feel. feeling broken-hearted about something. Grandpa turned toward home, but Finn wanted to keep walking. Please, he asked. So together they climbed to the top of the hill. Wow, said Grandpa. Just look at all those stars. Finn looked up at the sky and smiled. 
and said, don't worry. I'll remember to think of what's beneath. And what was beneath the stars? His grandpa, someone who loved him. That's a good thing to always think about, isn't it? All right. Well, can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap. Clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out? Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out. Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up? Because it's time to jump, jump, jump your jiggles out. Jump, jump. Jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, I mentioned I thought Bernard was not here because he might be trying to find a place to hibernate. And we're going to have a story about well, somebody who wants to sleep all winter. This is called A Loud Winter's Nap. It's written and illustrated by Katie Hudson. And it's published by Capstone for Young Readers. Hmm. Tortoise. That's him right there. Do you know a tortoise is a turtle? Tortoise had just snuggled in for his long winter nap when... Hello there, Tortoise, chirped Robin. Would you like to join our singing class? No, grumbled Tortoise. I was trying to sleep. Tortoises don't like winter. Why not, asked Robin. They just don't, Tortoise said, and he packed up and left in search of a quieter house. He goes. I'm surprised the robins are still there. Well, Tortoise snuggled down in his new bed and he was just about to close his eyes when Hiya, Tortoise! Would you like to make some ice sculptures with me? asked Rabbit. No, groaned Tortoise. I was trying to sleep. Tortoises don't like winter. Why not? asked Rabbit. They just don't, said Tortoise. And then he packed up again. Tortoise trudged through the snow and found a new napping spot. And again, Tortoise snuggled down in his new bed. And he was just about to close his eyes when... Thud, pat, thud, splat. Hey, Tortoise, would you like to play in our snowball fight? asked Squirrel. No, said Tortoise angrily. I'm trying to sleep. Tortoises don't like winter. Why not? asked Squirrel. They just don't, growled. Why would anyone want to stay awake for winter, grumbled Tortoise. He was tired and cold, and he needed to find a quieter place to sleep. So Tortoise decided to move to higher ground. So off he went, put up a sign, said do not disturb until spring. Tortoise snuggled down in his new bed, and he was 
just about to close his eyes when... Duh! 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 Bounce! 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 Swish! 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 Oh, no! cried Tortoise. I don't know what these are. Do you? Hmm. Kerr plunk. I do not like winter, said Tortoise. His tree had fallen over, and there was fever. I think he's responsible. Well, Tortoise hiked up a big snowy hill, and behind a small tree he found a flat piece of wood. It was the perfect place for napping. So he snuggled down on his new bed and he was just about to close his eyes when, oh no, can you see what his bed was? Whoosh! A sled. Now as Tortoise whizzed along, he couldn't help smiling. Hmm. Maybe winter isn't so bad, he thought. And as he flew off his sled and through the air, he couldn't help giggling. Maybe winter is more than cold and snow, he thought. And as he slid across the ice, realized he had been wrong. And that night, Tortoise skated, slid, and spun with his friends late into the night. He wasn't tired or cold. Maybe some tortoises could like winter after all. Do you like winter? It's getting a little chilly out there. Can you put up your hands like this? You put your thumbs in the thumb holes and your fingers all together. This is a rhyme that we can say in mitten weather. It doesn't matter if they're made of wool or leather. You put your thumbs in the thumb holes and whip fingers all together. This is a rhyme that we can say in mitten weather. Have you got mittens? Did you get new ones this year? Or do you wear gloves where your fingers are separated? Mittens or gloves? Either one will help keep your fingers warm. And they might be helpful if you try to do this. How do you hug a porcupine? I would say very carefully. This is written by Lori Isop and illustrated by Gwen Millward. And it's published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Can you hug a horse? Of course. A cow? Well, with arms around her neck, that's how. A dog or cat is not hard. Just hug them in your own backyard. Hugging bunnies is just divine. But how do you hug a porcupine? Can you hug some billy goats? Entice them with a bag of oats. And surely you can hug a pig. Just spread your arms out extra big. And with baby chicks, be sweet, be kind. But how do you hug a porcupine? This prickly fellow won't be easy. My stomach's feeling kind of queasy. He wears a coat of thorny quills. To hug this one will take some skills. 
a hedgehog is a little prickly, an ostrich is just, well, a little tickly. A chimpanzee will hug you back. I've never hugged a huge yak. A giraffe requires quite a climb. But how do you hug a porcupine? An elephant? Please hug his trunk. I wouldn't want to hug a skunk. A kangaroo? Just hop this way. And don't let the dolphins slip away. A panda probably wouldn't mind. But how do you hug a porcupine? You must go slowly. Never hurry. Porcupines aren't soft and furry. His quills defend him from his foes. But I'm his friend. Surely he knows. At last, hooray, it's finally time. This is how you hug a porcupine. Do we see? Carefully. And you don't ever want to try to hug somebody who doesn't want to be hugged. So if that porcupine put up his quills, you'd say, mm, not right now. Well, I have, should we have porcupines jumping on our beds tonight? I have five prickly porcupines jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more porcupines jumping on the bed. So four prickly porcupines were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more porcupines jumping on the bed. So three pick prickly porcupines were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more porcupines jumping on the bed. So then two prickly porcupines were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more porcupines jumping on the bed. So that leaves one prickly porcupine jumping on the bed. When she fell off, oh, she bumped her head. So her mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more porcupines jumping on the bed. And if your porcupine jumps on your bed, check it for quills before you climb in. Well, our last big book is going to be about moose. This is called Moose Come Walking. It's written by Arlo Guthrie and illustrated by Alice M. Brock. And I have a feeling it probably is a song because Arlo Guthrie is a folk singer. Well, moose come walking up over the hill. Moose come walking, they rarely stand still. And when moose come walking, they walk where they will. And moose come walking up over the hill. Moose look into your window at night. I didn't know that. They look to the left and they look to the right. Those mooses are smiling. They think it's a zoo. Can you see why? They see, looks like he's in a cage. And that's why the mooses like looking at you. So if you see mooses while lying in bed, it's best just to lay there pretending you're dead. 
the mooses will leave and you'll get the thrill of seeing the mooses go over the hill. <laughs> Just a fun little one. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure it's time to see if you can find your bubble gum. So can you find some pretend bubble gum? There's mine. It has a wrapper, so I'm gonna unwrap it and I'm gonna pop it in my mouth and chew it up until it's all soft and squishy. Are you ready to do it with yours? Here we go. One, two, three. I think mine's soft and squishy, so I'm gonna spit it out. Will you spit yours in your hand? One two, three, and clap your other hand on top. And now we've got sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. I don't want to leave it there, do you? So let's get it off. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your shoulder. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. Did you find them? On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. And time for us to get ready for a little something fun on the flannel board. And I think I'll turn it this way. Can you see it? And we're going to go into the jungle. And we're going to have one, two, you counting with me? Three, four. Five jungle critters. Well, five jungle critters and not one more. The zebra gallops away. Whoop. So then, that leaves four. Four jungle critters with lots to do and see. The elephant stomps away. Boom. And that leaves three. Three jungle critters. What will they do? The leopard slinks away. And that leaves two. Two jungle critters playing in the sun. The monkey swings away and that leaves one. One tall giraffe playing all alone. He gallops away and that leaves none. But then, Five jungle critters, back they come. They'll have fun playing with everyone. Well, let's finish up with our Sandra Boynton book. And tonight, we're going to have pajama time. Are you in your jammies? I am. This is published by Workman Publishing. Well, the moon is up. It's getting late. 
So let's get ready to celebrate. It's pajama time. Pull on the bottoms, put on the top. Get yourself set to pajama de bop. It's pajama time. Now some are old and some are new. Some are red. Well, maybe that's where Bernard is. That's him in the book. Hmm. And some are blue. Some are fuzzy. Some are not. But we can all pajama in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. Oh, yes, it's pajama time. Now, some are pink and some are green. And some are the ugliest you've ever seen. They might be stripy or polka dot. But we can all pajama in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. So pajama to the left, pajama to the right, jamma, 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 PJ. Everybody's wearing them for dancing tonight. Jamma, 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 PJ. Now all around the room in one big line, wearing our pajamas and looking so fine. It's pajama time. Then hop into bed, turn out the light, you can have a party in your dreams tonight. It's pajama time. Hush, hush, it's pajama time. Hush, hush, it's pajama time. Good night. Sleep tight. And thank you for listening to some bedtime stories from Wood Library.